Welcome back YouTube. This is the NFA Review Channel and this is the Bowers Biddy. A lot of you guys have seen this little guy uh, travel across the United States. Bowers Group has been doing a pretty funny little marketing campaign where they're setting up the Biddy in funny photos on their social media pages. So some of you already know that this is out there. Uh, some of you have already heard it in person at my last event back in April. Uh, Bowers was there and the Biddy was as well. Now I didn't get any trigger time with it per se because I was hosting the event. I didn't really have much time to enjoy myself and shoot. Uh, so this is going to be the first time I shoot it right here with you guys. So I'm really curious to see what it can do. But as it says on the box, no wet, no wipes, no equal. So we will see how it does. Has a lot of ratings on it. Pretty cool little package. More on that later. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get down to the details. All right, as you unbox it, the first thing you will see is a little manual tucked away, and we'll pull out the bitty. I want to set that aside for right now. Wanted to talk about the packaging. Now, uh, being a responsible person on more than one SOT, I know what a pain it is for dealers to basically have to rent out the real estate of their safe. I mean, you got to think about it. Six to nine months you're waiting on this can, it's six to nine months that this can is stuck in their safe, taking up precious room. Uh, so when you have the footprint of a box of 50 rounds of 22 ammo, the footprint's pretty small, the packaging's cool. Uh, they have a little uh, chamber in here set aside uh, for the manual, kind of folds in like that. Now, you know, a lot of you guys don't realize how much time goes into designing something like this. Just the packaging alone had to be well thought out, and then the manual. And then you got to think, they had to print it on a thinner paper so it would fold easy and fit in there uh, and then shove as much information as you can on here to cover everything on a front and back format so kudos to Bowers for that uh, it's a very very efficient way to do it uh, so I thought that was uh, pretty neat and worth noting and then on the back side you have uh, the actual area where you can write the serial number so as a dealer you can have these just stacked in there and you know, you can put the phone number of the buyer or whatever on there. So pretty neat way to do that. Moving on to the Biddy itself. She comes in at a overall length of 2.8 inches, a diameter of one inch, and she weighs 2.6 ounces. Now you're probably wondering, 2.6 ounces, they probably could have got it all a little lighter. Well, listen to the materials they chose. So the tube is a grade nine titanium with a high temperature black Cerakote finish. The end caps themselves are aluminum, and then the baffles are steel. So we got stainless steel in there with a black nitride coating on the baffles. So titanium tube, steel baffles, pretty robust little can here. Um, so 2.6 ounces is still light. Uh, off the top of my head, that's probably lighter than your iPhone 10 for those of you out there that have one. So just keep that in mind. Uh, a little short, stubby, and lightweight. To take the suppressor apart for cleaning, uh, you're going to see these this uh, hex pattern here. So you can use pretty much any wrench, guys. You can buy one from Bowers if you want, but if you don't want to, you can just use a crescent wrench or whatever at home. First step would be to remove the front cap, set that aside, and then you can just turn it over and drop out the baffles, and then there should be aluminum spacer in here. So that's just to set the blast chamber a little larger. And then you have the tube and the rear mount. Now you can take the rear mount off. Uh, I usually never do unless I really got to clean the threads on these. You know, if I used a uh, shorter thread length, then that first section of threads in here can get gunked up because the threads aren't being uh, used, if you get what I'm saying. So sometimes, depending on what host you're using, you have to go in there and scrub them. But looks like that is a pretty short stack of threads, so that shouldn't be an issue. Set that aside. Now on first glance, those of you that are inexperienced with machining might think that it's a monocore, right? Because it's all stuck together in my fingers. Not the case. And especially if you actually looked at it, you can tell that it's complex enough that you can, you can never possibly machine something like that uh, in one piece. If you pull on it a little bit, you can see just how precise the fitting is. It's, it's all just friction fit here. I wonder if a microphone could pick that up can pick up like the 
the metal. Pretty neat, but they just snap right apart. So you have three baffles. Looks like a black nitride coating on stainless steel. Your aluminum spacer, end cap, stain, uh, titanium tube, and aluminum mount. Now for cleaning, it is a 22 suppressor. 22 ammo is inherently dirty. Uh, if you shoot it wet, even though they say you don't need to, because uh, it, was, it was not designed to be a wet can. Uh, if you shoot it wet or anything over a brick of ammo in one outing, you're going to have to come home, take it apart, and clean it. So don't let it sit at the wayside. Uh, do not put the tube, end cap, front cap, or spacer in an ultrasonic cleaner. Ultrasonic cleaners, when they cavitate, can pit aluminum and titanium, and they will remove that nice finish on there, Okay, depending on the solvent you're using. The stainless steel baffles, you can throw them in there and might discolor that nice black nitride on there. You can probably just try to hit up with some solvent and a wire brush to see if that does the job. If not, then you can resort to the cleaner. I always try to resort to the uh, ultrasonic cleaner as a last resort, especially with baffles that are coated. Uh, if these were just raw stainless, it wouldn't be that, that big of a deal. Um, so you're probably wondering what this little guy performs like. And a silencer shop already did some uh, research on it. Now, they did have a metering day. Uh, I believe there's a third party there running it. Uh, now, they did mention it was a really off day. All the cans across the board metered a little louder than normal. Uh, I don't know if it was the relative humidity or the temperature, the elevation they were at, uh, but the meter was recently calibrated. But every suppressor, some that are known to be quieter than they recorded that day, were louder. So uh, keep that in mind. But on a rifle dry, remember, it averaged uh, 117 decibels. So 117 dry on a bolt action and a semi-automatic. So uh, pretty good performance there. That's pretty much kind of where all the other brands are, even with the full size. They might be a little quieter uh, on the rifles, but uh, rifle's not that hard of a feat to be quiet on. On the pistol, it metered with CCI standard velocity ammo at an average of 134 the entire day dry. Now the OSHA standard for uh, hearing damage is at 140. So it's six decibels quieter uh, than the threshold right there. So um, now even though this is not a, a can designed to be shot wet, we are gonna shoot it wet. Now I'm not gonna use water because I hate shooting with water because you get back spray and it corrodes the cans and it's just, I hate it. Uh, something we're gonna do in this video is use some white lithium grease. Now there's a couple advantages to that. Uh, one, you don't have to clean it right away when you get home because you're not gonna have corrosive water sitting in there eating up everything. And two, you could leave it pre-charged if you want. Now what I mean by pre-charged is say, you know, you have a pest, pest control problem uh, around your house or your property and you wanna leave a can uh, it's ready to go. Say uh, you can throw it in a backpack or some sort of uh, satchel. You know, Indiana Jones had one. <laughs> like throw this on a Beretta 21A in your pocket, you know, do a little woods walk. A little snake slithers out or... I'm a snake. I'm a snake. Or whatever. Armadillo. We know I have issues with those. You can quickly pop it. Now dry, yeah, it's still hearing safe, but let's say you don't want to alert your neighbors to you're doing anything. Even though it's legal what you're doing, you don't want to scare the liberals next door. Uh, you could pre-charge this with white lithium. So it's not going to corrode anything. I can pre-charge the face of the first baffle here with a little goop line, a little bead of white lithium. And I can throw it in my safe and it can sit there for years. It's not going to do anything. I don't even think it'll dry out because I pre-charged some for a while and they just sit there. Now when you pull it out and you go outside, your first shot is going to be a lot quieter. Subsequent shots will be quieter because you are technically shooting it uh, wet. So a uh, little side information there. So we'll try some white lithium grease after we get our unsuppressed baseline and our dry baseline. Then we'll try it with the grease and see how she does. Uh, but really, really cool little can here. Um, so these are just uh, the same baffles they use in their USS, I've been told. I, have, I don't have any hands on time with the USS, so uh, maybe we'll review that next. Uh, to reassemble it, follow the directions in the manual. There was a lot of R&D that went into the size of the suppressor. So much so, I read somewhere that 
I mean, they changed the length by like 0.2 of an inch. And it was enough change to drop the decibels another five decibels. That's crazy. So a lot of R&D went into this. Um, so when the manual says to orient the baffles uh, porting at 180 degree increments, I'm going to orient it exactly that way. So to do that, you'll just have, uh, let's just do for the sake of the camera, you have the top baffle with your, force, your port facing this way. And we'll put the second one with the port facing this way. Snap those together. And then the port facing the camera again. And there you have it. You have 180 degree uh, orientation of the ports. Now to reassemble, super easy. Once it's all clean, go ahead and put the baffle stack on the table. Make sure that your mount is already on the tube because you want something for the baffle stack to butt up to. And then you just want to set the spacer on top of the first baffle and then just slide it over the top. Flip it over here and screw on your front cap and that's it. Remember, uh, just do a little more than hand tight. Just use your takedown tool and give it a little snug. That way the stack's nice and compressed. It's not going to come loose under any recoil or anything like that. So in a nutshell, that is the Bowers Biddy. Really neat little can. Love the marketing campaign, love the packaging. Now I want to go put it to the test and see just how it sounds, see what the tone sounds like, and more importantly, see if my little white lithium grease trick is going to be worth messing with. Let's go ahead and hit that range.
hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, definitely a really neat little 22 can. In fact, you know, it's pretty amazing that it can handle the calibers it does as well as it does. I mean, it can handle 17 HMR, 17 WSM, 22, including 22 long rifle full auto. Okay, so full auto firing schedule on the 22 long rifle, uh, 22 Magnum, FN 5.7, and 22 Hornet. So pretty broad spectrum of calibers, and this is definitely the smallest suppressor I've ever shot. I ended up pulling every 22 can that I had out of my safe, lining them up. Sure enough, this is the smallest 22 can that I have. Uh, so definitely a lot of performance there. Now as far as shooting and the tone, uh, I did notice a little first round pop across the board, pretty much on every host. Definitely shot two is better, and then shot three and on was sounded great. Um, I tried to shoot it on a rifle today, guys. Was filming the unsuppressed scenes, and I had the extractor break on the Savage FESR. So, is what it is. It's the only 22 rifle I brought with me today. I don't have time to drive all the way back home and all the way back out here to continue filming. So, we're just gonna have to stick with the pistols. Now, if you want to hear it on a rifle, I know Dustin Ellerman already um, filmed a review on it and he does show it on rifles. Uh, he's been, he went to my last two shooting events, the one at Reload and the one, my third annual, uh, he was with Bowers there. So go ahead and check out his video if you want to see the rifles. Um, now I did bring three different pistols today to show you the tonal changes in the length of barrel. So you have a really small barrel in that Breda 21A, then a little larger in the Walter, and then Obviously, the Ruger Mark IV here is the longest of all. So it's pretty neat to hear the change. I kind of like the Walter the most out of all of them. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just a barrel length combination or what. But we were shooting CCI, uh, subsonic ammo a day, which those of you that have been around long enough know that, <laughs> that CCI standard velocity and CCI subsonic labels, same ammo in the box, different labels. I don't know why they do that, uh, but the velocities are the same. And one might be a round nose, one might be a hollow point, but the velocities are the same. Uh, so, yeah, sounded good, little first round pop. Then we added the grease and things uh, got even better. Uh, but I must say, for just shooting out in an open field like that, where you don't have a lot of sound reflecting surfaces, pff, shoot it dry so you don't have to screw around with, you know, detail cleaning the can out of all that grease when you're done shooting. Um, perform just fine dry there. Now. Is this a can that you can impress a newcomer to the world of suppressors with? Probably not, because that first round pop might set them off a little bit. It wasn't loud, I didn't get any ring or any discomfort, but I've shot so many cans, I, I know what's achievable. A um, lot of performance, but it's not gonna be Hollywood quiet, dry, okay? Um, that being said, this will impress the hell out of anyone who's been around suppressors for more than a year. I mean, it really, really will. I can impress the hell out of me and I've shot pretty much everything under the sun. To get that much suppression and performance and to be hearing safe dry is crazy on a can this small. Uh, especially for retail price of what, 325, I think Bowers is selling it for. So that's pretty impressive. Now, if you don't wanna buy it, you want a chance at winning it, I am giving it away on my Patreon page. With the launch of this video, uh, check my Patreon account. I'm going to have all the rules to enter. The rules are pretty much, you just have to be a Patreon supporter to help the operating cost of this channel, and you're in it to win it. Um, we're about to give away the CGS Group Kraken SK to my Patreon members um, on July 5th. So I'm recording this right now at the end of June, so I don't know if I'll have it uploaded before or after that giveaway, but July 5th is going to be the giveaway for the Kraken SK. This one will be following uh, two weeks later. So. Pretty exciting guys. This is, in addition to the gift cards I give away every single month, I'm gonna try to give away suppressors for all my supporters as well. You guys do an awesome job of help, of helping the operating cost of this channel. Now that I lost my ammo sponsor because Freedom Munitions isn't doing so hot right now, now I have to buy my own ammo, stuff like that. So that's what your money is going towards. Um, so again, make sure to smash that subscribe button, click that notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. A lot of giveaways coming and more annual shoots in the works right now. I'll see you next time.